In the video today we'll be talking about digitisation and how our company Very can help you if you're involved in training, health and safety or if you're implementing EU funding, we can help you digitise your paperwork. So welcome to Profile Street TV and today we're joined by Anne-Marie McSorley from uh, Very. You're the CEO of a, a very interesting company so you would mind telling us a little bit about yourself and, and what Very does? So at Very we digitise compliance. So everybody that you probably know whether they're involved in any type of health and safety training, European funding, peace and reconciliation, the compliance paperwork is everybody's frustration and everybody's nightmare. So what we do is we take the paper away and digitise all of that data, giving you value in the mandatory work. Because previously you filled loads and loads of pieces of paper they were stored in a room, sometimes you even had to pay for the storage, mm -hmm. but nobody used any of the data. So we've basically converted that into, into something that you can win new contracts with because you have better governance. Uh, we've um, helped you cut your administration cost, obviously. And, and most importantly, gives you the value of the data. Um, my son and I were watching loads of James Bond movies over Christmas and we were saying that uh, there's one that's all about data. And it's, it is really the new currency, so it's about giving your company that intelligence about what's happening from something that you had to do anyway, but you're just doing it in a better way. Incredible, actually. And, and you know, think of all the tenders and, and like, a, sadly, our, our country lives and breeds tenders, especially with the European Union here in Northern Ireland and Ireland. Uh, so the paperwork is the paperwork we have to track yeah. and keep this. And, and governance is nearly always the first question mm -hmm. on every... Um, public sector NOA um, contract that you do, um, it's, it's all about your, your governance and so to have transparency in real time instead of a paper process that mm. nobody can ever get to the end of and it's just the, the nightmare. People end up spending their time at their desks doing paperwork rather than animating or training or doing what they're supposed to be doing, they end up shuffling pieces of paper around so it's just a, a simple mobile app and a, and a dashboard that allows you to visualise the data. Incredible, because actually this one we just looked at and uh, we actually worked out that you'd probably need one person full-time dedicated to admin. I like that that much work. So amazing. So actually, so you take the data, what, so what kind of data do you... Yeah, so it's the KPIs of a programme. So um, I my background is um, quality. I, I've always been working in management um, and I lived in Northern Ireland for 15 years. Um, I'm from Kilkenny now and, and originally. But um, when I was in the north, I was firstly a hotel manager, being in the park years ago. Then I worked in the Western Education Library Board as a hotel services manager, looking after all of the, uh, the catering and the cleaning staff in Throne County Hospital. Then I went on to be the tourism officer in Dungannon Council. But again, I was always managing big groups of people, managing their training, managing their um, information. And when I moved to the south um, uh, about 12 years ago, I ended up teaching in a school and again it was a further education college and the paperwork was colossal and I was the quality manager and this had been you know something that had followed me all the way through the hospitals and through the, the councils and, and I thought uh, when I moved to the south um, I got some lovely contracts with the Oireachtas, the Ombudsman for Children's Office but um, then we had the recession and everything fell away and I was left with one big contract uh, for unemployed people. And uh, it was worth half a million, so it was a really big contract. There was only two or three of us in the business, and we had to scale up. But again, as we scaled up, number one, there was more paperwork because we had loads of different locations, and we were trying to get the paperwork in from locations. And number two, I was trying to have transparency in what they were doing because it had to be done in a specific way in order to comply. So I built a little... I, I got an innovation voucher. I know you can get them mm -hmm. up in the north mm -hmm. too. Built a little... Um, Thankfully, because the contract was valuable, I was able to invest a bit of time and money into a solution for that specific project. And as soon as I showed it to some of my colleagues, they were going, mm -hmm. oh my God, that mm -hmm. would. So about four years ago, that happened. And then I decided, listen, this has a little bit of legs. And through all of the supports, really good support through Enterprise Ireland, we uh, developed a beta and we launched and Within three months, we had the Irish Red Cross, the Irish Wheelchair Association. We had a lot of sort of big names. So we're two years in now, and we just uh, came to Northern Ireland about six or seven months ago with the Ignite program um, mm -hmm. in Ormo Baths. Mm -hmm. 
and I employed somebody after that program in September and fantastically last week we just won our first piece program uh, animation down in Oma yeah. so and it's a significant contract so we're really pleased um, and I'm happy because I used to live in Oma and I have so many friends here I was in Oma for 15 years so now I'm back to um, so we have somebody working full time and I'm up and down very regularly now so it's great incredible accent so been, you've been here back home up and down so brilliant and you're back here again today so you're visiting your, your, your team or your office up here today yeah then? so we have um, Nolene working out in Northern Ireland and we also mm -hmm. have clients in Donegal and Letterkenny um, so she she looks after the, the Northern Ireland side of things but I also have a son that's in Banbridge he's a vet so it's lovely I can come and stay with my, <laughs> my, big, my big baby son and um, uh, I just I find business in Northern Ireland brilliant because um, you know, I still have great network of friends and stuff, so I'm I'm enjoying sort of revisiting all of that, and um, uh, I'm I have a team of about seven down in Kilkenny, so there's there's about eight 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 in total um, at the moment. So. Amazing. So oh, when I hear your solution, I'm going, oh wow, yeah, definitely, we need to find more about this. So <laughs> no, so, sounds incredible. So so you think businesses in general should be digitizing their their data? Yeah, I I just think. You know, if you went into a restaurant two years ago mm -hmm. and somebody um, took your order on an iPad, you'd have gone, oh my God, that's really, really progressive. And this is really great. Um, and nowadays, if you go into a restaurant and somebody doesn't have an iPad, you go, oh, this place hasn't yeah. caught up with the times. And I think business is going to go that way too. It just depends on the early adapters and the innovators and the people that are, um, you know, have the support and the sort of the support and management it's ideal in in something that's new. So if you have a new project to do, or if you have new, it's quite difficult to to implement change. You know, so um, as we were chatting earlier on about institutions, you know, it's harder to bring it to institutions. We found the private sector are the first ones to adopt, but it's great to be now the government. The contract we got with Northern Ireland is uh, with the peace officer in mm -hmm. in Oma Council and Oman Fermana. So uh, we're delighted with that. Incredible, excellent. And uh, I guess when I'm thinking of all this data and, and how many years we, ha we all have to store data, I'm thinking of GDPR as well. Yeah. So, I mean, that's one of the biggest issues because there was an awful lot of people that spent the last six months pulling their hair out about mm -hmm. GDPR. But it's like any quality system. You talk about it and you think about it and you create policies, but who's going to actually implement you know, you create this folder <laughs> that sits in a press <laughs> or these boxes of paper that are, whereas yeah. with the digitization, the implementation is transparent. It's either been done or it's not been done because it's real time information. So in terms of GDPR, you know, um, Michael O'Leary is very smart with Ryanair. When you get on the site, you have to, you have to look at his extras. And with our system, it's all very tiered. So people that, um, they only see the information that's relevant to them, but they also have to sign off on their, their, their both their own, the protection of their own data, and if they are processing other people's data, the protection of other people's data. So these screens come at them, rather than pieces of for paper that they can either yeah. fill or not fill and, re and give back or not give back. You know, there's a real time um, implement, implementation, so it's just a much better way of doing doing business. Amazing, yeah. and making sure that everything is actually done. You can probably see it so much quicker and, and no loss yeah, paper. Yeah, and, and, and data visualization is so exciting now. Like, I'm a bit of a, I, I, my kids say that I can't program the Sky Remote, how can I have a tech company, you know, <laughs> but I do like being able to get things done. I'm a doer. And I just love to be able to visualize data, visualize what's, how progression and visualize real-time information rather than having to depend on anecdotal evidence or you know every piece of evidence that you require whether it's in a training environment or it's in a health and safety environment or it's in a fund program environment that, that can all be taken a picture of attached and all of a sudden instead of an email that has to be fi filed and downloaded and filed and nobody knows where that file is shared it's all on one dashboard that's completely accessible, you know. Incredible. That's probably then training uh, support then you can pull out or training ideas and performance improvements. Business. Yeah, one of our um, one of our main sort of um, USPs to me is the uh, availability of the data analytics. So you can drill down into how the program went in terms of age profiles, gender profiles, regions, categories. 
you can look at a specific person that's animating or the program or training for you or or even on a building site and we have built a construction product recently so the mobile app will show you every worker and what their credentials are so you know that you can't put that guy on the digger or that guy isn't able to um you know go down that shaft because he doesn't have what what's required and these are the the issues that occur um so to have that real time, real time data at your fingertips is amazing. You know? Incredible. Just like, yeah, exactly, safety, safety. I know so many friends and uh, the stories I used to hear back in the day. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can imagine walking around with your iPad or phone and you can check, you make can sure check. that everything is safe and secure. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. yeah. talk, talk about the benefit for the staff and for the company, the, yeah. the risk. Amazing. It's really the training quality system coming live mm -hmm. and becoming... Um, at your fingertips rather than in boxes in rooms that an auditor looks at once a year and normally get into trouble because there's big gaps in it. Yeah. So it's it's just getting the value out of that live data. Because you have to do it anyway no matter what. I see that's the point and you're not paying more money you're actually wasting huge mm -hmm. amounts of your like you say if you got on that program you'd have to take on a full-time administrator. Mm -hmm. That administrator is just shuffling paper around rather than gathering vital information about the performance of the actual program you know and it we can we can build the kpis um around you know attendance or assessment or deliverables or because it's all very customizable so you can just build out your kpis of your training or of your program mm -hmm. so. do, do you find that you have to change some businesses uh, misconceptions or ideas around data yeah it's it's quite it's it's not i mean it <laughs> I don't think any startup is easy. I think it's hard work and change is very difficult and, and it can be very painful for people. But the people that we've had really successful are people that um, take a lead, you know, they're kind of the people that that really, um, you know, they're the they're our um, heroes and they, 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 they go into the business and say, this, I'm going to put my name down, I'm going to put put my neck on the line and I'm going to commit to spending a few bob on this and putting the time into this because I think in six months time everything will be better mm -hmm. but that the first month or two you know is, is it's a risk you're taking yeah. to do it but the only the only benefit that I see to us is that just like in the analogy around the restaurant mm -hmm. this is coming to us yeah. nobody can say that it's not we can't stay in paper we we're going to have to go there mm -hmm. so it's about being brave enough to um to, to take that first step um, if you are currently a paper-based organisation. So and we go to training uh, events here all the time and you have to fill in the, the form at the end and you wonder why you don't get that in email so it can be tracked and... Totally. Uh, and Our system does that so if you had a training session for 50 people mm -hmm. The iPads are your check-in, and we have digital signatures. We actually got those through the um, an innovation voucher up in Northern Ireland. We only got those in the last six months uh, through Northwest College. So, um, so that so the digital signatures allow you to okay your GDPR, and then as the relationship with that client develops, you can ask them for their signature for anything you need to sign off on. So all of a sudden, there's no more sign-ins and pieces of paper and. Um, and I think really, unless it's a legal document now, digital signatures are okay. Right, yeah. it, it, the reason why I went ahead of this, I was in England um, and I hired a car. One of my kids was doing at a, an event and I went over to see him and I hired a car. And instead of signing the, the form at the car hire, they had an iPad and, and I went, she goes, we need to do this. Yeah. And it wasn't that difficult a, a job to integrate that into our current platform, so now that's there as well. So it's really, Problem. really beneficial. And thinking as well, the, the environmental saving of all the paper. Like it's, Absolutely. It's incredible. Um, one of our, one of the, we, we work a lot with students and we would have a lot of um, uh, placements over, you know, we have seven or eight full-time staff, but we'd always have three or four placements throughout Brilliant. the um, um, because I'm coming from a training background and I love the energy that young mm. people bring. Um, but one of the students, her her uh, boyfriend was working in a company and they were doing a full digitization, a, a multinational. And she showed me the report and it, you were talking about millions. They were saving in just paper and storage. 
millions in paper and storage. So for every small business, if you, even my own business, I did a bit of a clean out the other day and you know, two wheelie bins full of paper, the cost of the wheelie bins, the cost of the storage, the cost of the paper, the cost of yeah. the, the printing. Handling it as well. Handling it and, and the time involved. I'll move it to this pile and then Yeah, no, I'll do that today later, and then I'll do that tomorrow and, and, and still sitting there, you know, so. Incredible. And again, with the, the data storage, and how, how long do you store the data for them? So we store the data um, dependent very much on the contract of the, um, the, the client. So an example is that we have um, uh, our main uh, client base in the South is a group of private sector providers that deliver to a £35 million annual contract and they have to keep their data for eight years. Um, so we have out of 25 companies, we have eight of those companies. And so, but if um, the, the drivers behind our product um, are either legislation, contracts, um, anything that's mandatory, mm -hmm. EU funding. Um, and um, I, I did a number of uh, accelerators um, and I did some design thinking. We won Google Adopt a Startup. And then we won the Ryan, we were involved in the Ryan Academy Female High Flyers, but one of the things that um, that I learned was um, to think about um, what you're doing in the in in the head of your client, and our clients are always our. Um, we did this Lego exercise, and they asked me to you know draw do something with the Lego, and I built a big bulldog, a big watchdog, so. It's all about the watchdogs, and that's the reason um, why some of these accelerators are good because it makes you think outside of what you're actually um, trying to, you're not thinking about data or you're not thinking about your product, you're actually thinking about the pain of your client. And, and that's, um, that's the reason why it's basically to the contract or to the requirement. Incredible, actually, yeah. So, so it could it could be six years, it could be four years, it could be longer, just depending on what you what you need. Yeah, and we had a uh, one client that wanted the data in, and then export it and delete it immediately. Wow. So they want to gather the data. Mm -hmm. We can we export to the national um, in the south. It's called QQI, but in, it would be your CEA. So we can have we do an, a direct export to their to their system. So we can like you know we can spit the data out. Um, to another system if it if it's required, you know yeah. we can do the API up. So amazing, excellent. And so you're in the digital space. You're seeing all the data. I'm just wondering, and maybe you've seen changes in education or healthcare. Do you think that uh, everything's going to go digital now? The way the way the industry's changing. Yeah, it's funny. When I was launching my product first, I found it hard to get support because everybody was thinking. LMS, learning management systems, e-learning, and they didn't really hear what I was saying. They were thinking that that's what I was doing. Mm -hmm. It's a hugely competitive space, um, the digitization of education. And um, there are fantastic products and there are poor products, but I totally believe that e-learning is not a solution. It has to be a blended um, approach yeah. because um, and I think you know some of the sectors are absolutely inundated with e-learning, and people are like Candy Crush on one hand, the the e-learning on the other hand, playing their Candy Crush, pressing the button, and then you know maybe getting through the little assessment at the back. So I think it's so important that the human element is there, and really what we do is we digitize the human element of it, because we're gathering whatever the people are involved rather than the e-learning. So e-learning is definitely a great. Um, innovation and great addition, but I think blended is the way to go. Oh no, and I think I've read loads of uh, surveys, I'm sure, and reports that blended for outperforms any other type of learning, and uh, we, we, we definitely are advocates in that. So, we do a lot of training here with businesses, and we provide videos and, and custom to the problems, but without sitting down, it's, the difference is incredible because you can answer the questions take them through any problems, uh, so blend it without mm -hmm. doubt. Uh, so. And I also think um, the great thing about e-learning is that you get metrics from whatever platform you're using, mm -hmm. how many hours and how many times. Yep. But what happens with normal training is those metrics are on a piece of paper or evaluations, but they're never collated. So with, that, with us, we can take the both the quantitative stats, so did they pass or did they fail or how, how many days they did or did they achieve their um, their deliverables? 
um, and then the qualitative, like the evaluation stuff, and we put mm -hmm. all of the, all that data onto one. So we're almost like getting the data that e-learning gives you from the from the offline training. So it's great then to be able to put both sets of data on a on a board and be able to then really evaluate: is it working or is it not working? Okay. And companies spend a fortune on training, and yeah. they don't measure it. So oh no, that's that's a tick box ticked. Done. Yeah. We done oh, we've done it now. But, you know. Does it work for you? Does it pay? It does. Yeah. It, is it worthwhile, or is the person that's delivering it performing for you? Should we do it again, or yeah, should we do it in a year, or never again? And we need to go a different route. No, I totally agree. I, I see it, and, and often you wonder, and you're you're gathering the feedback, and it's it's probably easier. With our size of a team, you know, we're relatively small, but I can imagine the company with fifty or a hundred or mm -hmm. two other staff. How do they do it? Yeah. I did a. Um, uh, we, we just got an agreement um, with a company in Dublin, and they have a hundred corporates um, as clients for training, and they're delivering, you know, between five and fifty programs for a hundred corporates. And we're just digitizing their evaluations and their attendance. And they said that that alone will make huge improvements to their to to the the work that they're doing. Um, in so it's 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 funny that um. um the corporate world hasn't even get caught up on this at all, um, other than the e-learning piece. And, and to me, the e-learning piece is not the, the, the solution. It, it's a part of the solution, but it's definitely not the solution. Incredible. You've just made their 2019 then for them. <laughs> that is, uh, they, can, they can relax, they put their feet up. But you know, it's amazing. I'm, I'm thinking again, you know, back to the, the quality process. So actually, what we do in businesses and what we implement and what is it success or is it not? And how you gather the feedback is mm -hmm. uh, incredible. So again, back to the watchdogs. One of our other client sets is um, there's there's a, a quality um, regulator in the, in the South Quality Qualifications Ireland, mm -hmm. and they have about five hundred accredited providers, and they are currently going through re-engagement. So what they're doing is they're making everybody set up their quality process and then prove that they can implement it. So for us. This is a great time because we're going to everybody that's spent the last three months writing this huge quality document and then showing them how they could implement it using a digital system rather than a paper-based system. So it's a really good time for us because it's it's um, it's very relevant at the moment. Brilliant. No, I'm, I'm blown away. So definitely we have to find out more. So if anyone's watching this video um, and want to find out more about your solution, or reach out, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, well, our website's very.ie, as in verification, four letters, V-E-R-I.ie. Yeah. Um, Nolene is working out of um, Belfast and Tyrone. Mm. Um, I'm in Dublin um, weekly, and we're based down in Kilkenny. So, um, uh, and we have um, three business development, business development managers covering um, the West and the South, and then the greater Dublin area. So we have loads of, people that can come out and uh, what we normally do is like a scoping ex after our demo and if you feel like it's something for you we do a, a scoping exercise which is basically an analysis of you know what do you need done and to and that's then credited against the rollout of the software if you decide to go forward so I just think that sort of one day analysis is a great way of starting it kind of gives you um, an expert outlook of you know what would be the next steps or what part do you want to move to? So it's very.ie and I'm Anne Marie, so I'm Brilliant. delighted to talk to anybody. It's so easy to get you no matter where you are in the country and international as well, I'm sure. Yeah. Brilliant. What a solution. So you know, thank you very much for coming in and telling us uh, a little bit about it today and uh, talking us through how important it is to protect your data and actually use it. Uh, don't, don't just collect it, but, but use it. So for, thank, thank you for your time. And thanks, thanks again. Thanks Don't for the you. opportunity. Cool. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the, our little video today. Uh, please do check out the links below and visit the very team and do say hello. If you are collecting data, are you actually using it? Uh, I, I'm going to have to think about that after the, the video here. Um, and this is Kieran from Profile 3. We're the content marketing agency based in Belfast uh, at the Innovation Factory. And hopefully we'll see you in tomorrow's video. So thank you.